A few years ago, a crazy French man got in a digger and dug a trench. Why did he do that? Well, I tell you what, he was in one of the windiest places in the world and he wanted to go fast. And the way to go fast is to build this thing. Just check out the channel. If you're wondering where we are, we're in Luderitz for the Luderitz Speed Challenge and we're gonna go super fast. Lockdown, the longest serving sponsor of this event, of the Luderitz Speed Challenge. This is Bruno from, uh, well, the biggest hotel here. The Luderitz Nest Hotel. Exactly, the Luderitz Nest Hotel. If you come to Luderitz, that's where you've got to stay. But uh, this guy is like a historian of this event. Uh, what was the first year uh, we kicked off here in Luderitz? Well, the first year of the Luderitz Speed Challenge was in 2007. And, uh, of course, the brainchild behind the Speed Challenge and the canal is Sebastian Catalan the first man to do 50 and 55 knots ever on yeah. this planet. How has the event changed over the years? Because I heard the first event was actually sailed in the lagoon, is that right? Yes, the first event, uh, in fact, 207, 208, 209, were sailed in the lagoon, right next to the, cha right next to the uh, ch channel, in fact. And basically what they found was that it was necessary to, get a, uh, to build a channel where the water would be flatter. Yeah. And that was Seb's idea. And now that you see with the channel, which is a kilometre long, uh, the water is much flatter, which allows it for the guys to go faster. Okay, so it's a man-made channel, they dig it out every year or it stays around in the year? How does it work? No, it's a man-made channel which is dug, dug out every year, it's specially dug out, it's quite a big project, because here where the Ludra Speed Canal is, it's actually in a protected wetland area. Okay. And in order for the organisers to run the event, they've got to get special permission from the Ministry of Environment and Tourism to run the event. Okay. You can't just come and dig a hole here, okay? It's in a protected wetland area. So this is a very, very, very special spot. I mean, to date, we have 110 national records plus 17 world records, which is astonishing. It's crazy, isn't it? It's yeah. crazy. The first place everyone edited 50 knots was here. Anders Bringdown, I think, was the first guy to go over 50. Correct. In 2012, Anders Bringdown was the first one to do 50 knots. Shortly afterwards, Antoine Albert, <laughs> yeah. 23 times world champion, he just pipped. Uh, I think Ten minutes later, or something. <laughs> he just pipped Antoine, and uh, and then on that, you know, during the 212 event, we had the first time ten speed sailors doing over 50 knots. Yeah. First time ever. Crazy, isn't it? Crazy. So that 50 knot club, it's uh, just over 10 people, I think, at the moment. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see if anyone can join it. We've got a couple of new guys this year, some virgins to the Luderitz Speed Challenge. Gunnar Asmussen, I think he did over 100k, which is 53 on a GPS. Uh, in Germany the other day, Andy Laufer, another quick guy. Are you calling any other 50 knot clubs uh, this year? Well, I think, uh, you know, Tuan Fursaput is, is, is a definite uh, potential yeah. because, um, you know, these guys haven't achieved 50 knots anywhere else. Yeah. If they're going to achieve the 50 knots, it's going to be right here at this spot. First time this year, there are new organisers. Mark Grinnell, who is the third fastest in the world, production world champion, yeah. world champion, and uh, Raffaello Gardelli, they're the new organisers of the Speed Challenge. And uh, this year it's very, very exciting because once again we've got the world's best, including Bjorn Dunkerbeck, 43 times world champion, Farrow Lachia, British champion, yeah. Zara Davis, world champion, and also British ladies champion. Uh, we've got Tuan Fursaput, who is the PWA world open water champion so it's going to be a very very i think exciting event this year once again i think we found our man He's definitely got the size, Twan, uh, a new, uh, well, a new rider to this event here in Luderitz, Luderitz Speed Challenge. Talk us through what your goals are for this event. Uh, for sure, I want to beat 50 knots. So that's that's the first goal. And if 
if that is possible, I'm going to fight with the big guys. You got here nice and early, uh, but it's all about one day. Yeah, 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 it's all about one day. We were not, not lucky with the forecast. Yeah, we had a lot of time. It was peaking, and then when we came to the day, it was dropping a lot. And uh, a lot of days without wind. So it's now all goals set on Wednesday. And uh, looks like the wind is already there for one week. So it should be good. And we get some nuking wins and uh, some good speeds in. So yeah. who's, uh, who's going to be your main competition? Uh, I think Bjorn. Bjorn looks really fit. And uh, he's shown already that he is like, constantly peaking in, in first place the whole event. Uh, Gunnar is really fast. He already showed in Germany that he could do 100k. Uh, Andy is really fast at this moment, and I have for sure there are a lot of other guys. Mark Rinell, the, the production world record holder at this moment. So a lot of competition, but that's good. <laughs> What's your personal best coming into this event? Not so high, it was around 43, I think 43, and in the first week I already went up to f almost 46. This is definitely the place. Yeah, yeah, it's the fastest place, the fastest I have ever seen. It's no way, in, in Holland we have to work so hard to get like a, a 43, not over 500 meters. It's already a lot of work, and here you're just cruising. If you're doing 43 knots, it's like feeling like going 30 knots in Holland, it's <laughs> insane. So. Cool man, good luck with the event. We've got this man! Got the world speed record, yeah, Dion Dunkerback, he is here to get that world record. We're here with the main man, Bjorn Dunkerback. He's got more world titles than anyone on this planet, um, but he does not hold the world windsurfing speed record. You're up there, 51 knots. 59 is my best so far, with a top speed of almost 99 k's an hour. And my main goal here is definitely to beat the 100 k's top speed. And condition, channel, and uh, wind permitting, obviously try to beat Antoine's uh, world record as well. Yeah, That's definitely in the balance, isn't it? This is the place, if it's ever gonna fall, Luderitz is the place. Yeah, the only 11 people have done more than 50 knots on the 500 meter got to done it here. The wind is really powerful when it blows. The channel is better than ever. The run up is a little longer, but the main thing is the, the main part of the course is flatter than ever. And uh, if you get the wind that is promising this week, uh, I hope you can prove it as well. This is your main thing now, isn't it? Speed. You're doing obviously the, the Dunkerbeck Speed Challenge as well. Uh, maybe just chat us a bit about that. Yes, I think speed can involve a lot of different uh, levels of uh, windsurfers in the same event. Uh, your personal best uh, can compete against each other like the Dunkerbeck Speed Challenge. Just brings a lot of good windsurfers together and uh, you can do it forever. You can have the youngest one competing against each other and the oldest one as well. So once you start, you can do it all life long. Mark Grinnell, one of the major players at this event. He is the production board record holder and how fast in the world, where are you? Number three at the moment. Number three. Any hopes of uh, moving up that ladder? Absolutely, just I don't want to beat Antoine as I said the other day, but I do want to beat Patrick. So number two would be good. Number two would be very good. But only if we get wind on Wednesday. If we don't have wind on Wednesday, it's not happening. Okay. Not happening. So it's all about it's all about Wednesday. 50, 60 knots of wind, we'll do a record for sure. And that's the thing, isn't it? This event, it's got a long waiting period, what, six weeks? But yeah. it comes down to one day at the end of the day. Sometimes. It's, it's about one day and one run on the right day, right time, right place. And you know, I'm generally between three and four o'clock. That's when the angle's right and the wind's the strongest. So that's when you've got to get on the water. You obviously organised in part organising this event this year. The course is looking good. The course really is looking absolutely fantastic, and it is so flat. Even when you guys were in here two Thursdays ago and it was blowing 73 knots down at Diaz Point, the channel was absolutely flat. When Dan did one run, um, sheeted out and still did 49 knots max. So if and the channel was super flat. So if we get a 50 knot day, records are going to go for sure.
personal goals this event? I don't have any personal goals. I never have. I'm just coming to see what we can do. Stay alive. We've seen who's around. Who are the major sort of players? Who's gonna Who's gonna maybe light this up? You never know, but I mean, maybe in your opinion. What you'll find is some people will really excel when the cup win starts to really nuke. So if I was a betting man, I'd be straight down to to, to Lad Brooks on the likes of Grinnell and Bjorn. You never ever count Bjorn out. Massive experience, massive talent, and I really hope some of the other guys are going to step up. In, at least into the 50 knot category if there's enough pressure and there's a few guys really capable of it I think. Names? Names? <laughs> I mean there's Ben Profit here and and there's Ben Profit, no pressure, no pressure. <laughs> So until very recently, there were four women in the 40 Knot Club. It's a pretty exclusive club, but now we have an extra member. Heidi, the newest member Yay. of the 40 Knot Club. So what were your goals coming to Luderitz this year? Just to improve myself. Yeah. So, and my goals come true, so. Yeah, that's exactly. So you didn't exactly. have any fixed targets? No, not really. Just no. to have fun, just to go fast. Faster and faster and faster, as everyone. <laughs> Obviously, you're, you're leaving today, which is kind of halfway through the competition. I think it yeah. runs for another couple of weeks. So you're going to miss those next forecasts. But I'm you're leaving be, yes. as the fastest woman to now. Yeah, Got a nice now. shiny new Chris yeah. Benz watch. Ask goodbye. She could have let it go. I could have bit my tongue. Two stubborn fools that let it come on. Rasmussen, Hello. what's your first impressions? I think it looks nice, if I can say that. Uh, it's quite wider than I imagined, actually. So I'm not that scared. <laughs> what goals have you got? Well, uh, maybe to break the, my national record, not mine, but the boys' national record. That will be my goal, I guess. Give us some numbers. I think it's only 36 or something. So I hope I will manage that. Yeah, any eyes on the 40 knot club? There's five girls in it at the moment. Between you and me, of course. Yeah, you've got to have one eye on that. <laughs> yeah, of course, it would be fun, but uh, I have to see you. talked about the 40 knot club uh, but there's a very exclusive club the 45 knot club in the women only three members and this is one of them uh, Zara Davis uh, an ex world record holder I think you held the record 2012, 2012 yeah 2012 to 2015 when Karen got it back and so Karen got it back in 2015 but she's back in 2017 at the Luderitz Speed Challenge and I guess you've got one goal yeah, for sure. You know, um, you don't come out here and not hope to uh, to better where you've been, inevitably. Um, and where she is is not that much farther ahead. So, uh, so yeah, if we get the weather, then hopefully. Yeah. You've been here obviously a few times before. 
you know how this game works. It's a six week holding period, but it comes down to one day, one run. Yeah, it does really. I mean, probably comes down to maybe a 15 minute period when it's really amazing. Um, you don't know if you're going to be on it then. Um, you just have to hope for the best, really. You, you sail your best all the time. You can be sailing for three, sometimes four hours in a day. I mean, obviously not constantly because you're back on the trailer and coming back upwind again, getting back in the canal, waiting your turn and then going again. You just have to hope that that gust you're on is the, is the one you need. It's flawless, don't look back when we are feeling free. Go ask you, 50 knots. Is it possible? For sure it's possible. Um, I'm not sure it's possible for me, uh, realistically. Um, I'm sort of towards the end of my speed sailing career. You know, my body's a bit broken already. Um, and I think, you know, you have to take a lot of tumbles to, to, to get to 50 knots. Uh, I think, you know, that we've got to get the canal flatter. I think the, the conditions have to be better for the lighter sailors to go faster. And then what happens is, is actually, the top men don't necessarily go quicker, but the gap narrows. And I think what we need to do is for the gap to narrow. So what we saw um, with me in 2012 is the gap significantly got, got less. Um, and then with Karen in 2015, unfortunately, the gap widened a little bit between us and, and the top men because the conditions were so gnarly. Um, and I think this canal, maybe, if it is indeed the flattest we've ever seen, then maybe, you know, that gap will get smaller again. And then if, you know, we can get closer to the men, we're starting to look at. If we can be three or four knots behind the men instead of five or six knots behind the men, then, you know, we're seriously looking at us pretty close to 50 knots, if not over the 50. Well, good luck this week. I see you on the video with this, with two eyes on. Harry Mike, you talk so much. <laughs> Crazy how you can do that. <laughs> you are like, like a machine. I never see that. You guys yes. have got the same speed. Yes, that's guys. <laughs> Taro, from core too. The same, same team, uh, same speed. Same, same car, yeah, same, car. <laughs> same life, yeah, yeah. No same life. girlfriend. No life. <laughs> oh, it's you. Oh, I miss you. Oh, please, oh, I have five minutes for him. Yeah, we have a bet to see who can break the 5304 first. We obviously no. know it's me because I, I set the score for us, so we see, huh? <laughs> who's 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 highest in the list though? Oh yeah, I did it before him, but he got the score. I don't know how, but why find someone? Or... No, uh, <laughs> uh, not too much. <laughs> You're here for just the week? No, oh, no uh, two weeks. Yeah, two weeks. At the final, we leave. Okay. But. Uh, but, um, when when uh, when instead the wind is strong, yeah. yeah, we make one run and we leave because we have the record. <laughs> we don't need to rest, huh? To yeah. stay. You 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 think the world record is possible here? I I come here six times. It's not my first time. I know this canal uh, like uh, like Sebastian. But uh, if we need, it's a special day when the when when the record is possible for kite. We need the perfect water, the perfect angle, and uh, sometimes it's coming. But uh, this year it changed a little bit, no? It's more square. Maybe we have the day for that. What's your, what's your peak speed? 58.2 at the final. Okay. Taro? Uh, 61. But at max peak. <laughs> what the hell? 60, 62. 62. And you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 61.9, eh? just below. 63.
I can say more. Yeah. More. I think we'll leave these two boys to it. <laughs> it's going to be a good fight. The Kiters are definitely here this week. These two have a score to settle. Uh, Sebastian Catalan's here. Yeah, Sil yeah. Sylvan or Taro? Uh, I won't say Taro. Yeah, I won't say Taro. The rest are useless. <laughs> that is for sure. Shame, man. Yeah, so he was, yeah, shame he was a good guy and, uh, you know. So he's gonna, I don't think he's gonna make it through the week, eh? <laughs> he's gonna be on the wall. <laughs> yeah, he's gonna bury himself. Yeah, so I'm gonna eat everything before I go because I need to have some weight because I'm too skinny! <laughs> That's why. To be fair, you, these kiters don't look like windsurfing speed sailors do yeah they? you need uh, to have like uh, bigger bowls you know that's the thing so uh, <laughs> make all the difference you ever missed your edge going down there yeah yeah, yeah i did actually yeah <laughs> i did so uh, yeah sometimes i yeah I twist my both ankle in the same direction. So, uh, so yeah, after you can't even walk anymore. I was gonna say, but if you miss the edge, surely you just hit the wall. No. Uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you bounce in the water one time if you're lucky, otherwise you go straight into the dry. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's really, really, really mean. And uh, so, yeah, I'm not planning on falling anyway. Yeah. <laughs> no, okay, that's probably a good plan. <laughs> Mr. Laufer, uh, this is a man who uh, used to do the, the professional windsurfing tour back. But will you tell us, you've come back to windsurfing, had a little bit of a break. Yeah, I had a break between 2000, 2007 and 2011 and I started again. Actually, I was only kite surfing. <laughs> What's your personal best coming into this event? Personal best uh, in top speed is only 48 something. Uh, not that fast because I, I'm not used to speed sailing. I'm also Gunnar, we maybe four or five times we went speed sailing in our lives. So uh, the training was more or less uh, slalom sailing and medium stuff, especially at my hometown in Ammersee. For the speed kini, we have this small Bavarian uh, contest. And yeah. Um, it's actually much more physical to train on, on bigger stuff and go fast on bigger stuff in choppy water than in uh, like completely flat canals. You gotta shake it, shake up the world. Shake it, go out and shake it. Why don't you shake it, shake up the world. And I've heard when it hits 50 knots here, the whole game changes. We haven't seen that yet, but uh, I. I suspect the, they say gravel starts flying, rocks will fly. Let's see. Maybe you will start flying. By the kind of lights, Alfie will fly away. Ah! You don't stand up, you don't get heard. Go on out and take. Hey, Gunnar, you've been a name on a, quite a lot of people's lips around here. You're touted for big things. How are you feeling on the channel? Comfortable? Yeah, very comfortable. But uh, it wasn't so windy the the, the first days on the channel. Um, but everybody's praying for for this week. So. I think we will see, if it's windy like, like 40, 50 north, we will see amazing speeds. The channel is super fast and yeah, I can't wait for the big Wednesday. So, but Wednesday can be the day for 50 knots. Maybe not for a, for, for a world record day, but, but for sure for 50 knots, maybe it's possible to go. Yeah. And there's obviously you and Andy Laufer here. Yeah, Andy Laufer, me and uh, Rob Hoffman, the Canon. So, yeah, he will do also uh, 50 knots, uh, average over 500. So yeah, we will, we three will push, and uh, yeah, we will see who's the fastest in the end. I said, shake it, shake up the world, shake it, go out. Tomorrow's meant to be nuclear. Everyone said, have you got your helmet? Don't worry, I actually forgot my helmet. But after a little trip down to the spa, I managed to create this. Shake up the world
Shake up the world. I'm ready for tomorrow. The big wins are coming. The records are going to get broke. We're going to be here to bring you all the action. Stay tuned. I'm standing next to the new Norwegian record holder. Woo! First run down the channel. Yeah, that was my first. And I nailed it. <laughs> so you, you got the official uh, word now? Yes, I have. So I broke uh, Morten Anders' uh, record and now I um, think I'm aiming for at least the 40 knots. How fast? Oh, 43. <laughs> I'm like crying underneath <laughs> it, but I'm not going to show that. I see the goggles, take the goggles off. No, oh, no. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's amazing. <laughs> Feel fast? Uh, what? Feel fast? Uh, no, it felt just good. Nice, actually. Oh, God. Sorry. <laughs> no, but that's so cool. Yeah, that's just amazing. Oh, my God. Oh. The Norwegian record has been smashed. Yeah. It has. That's amazing. 45 next. Come on. What? 45 next. Yeah, I'm going now. That's the problem with this place. You just keep wanting to go faster and faster and faster. Well, I haven't felt this good, like, ever. It's my turn to play my own game. Man, I'm feeling free. Now I'm going my own way. I can go for my space. It is going on. This is what the Luder in Speed Challenge is all about. Happy faces. Adrenaline is pumping. My adrenaline is pumping. So good to be with all this crew. I mean, there's some big guns here. Some big guys, some smaller guys. Chris Benz, obviously one of the main sponsors this event. He's turned up and he's putting in some big scores. Bjorn Dunkerbeck, he's trying to push for that world record. We've got Twan first put. We've got Gunnar Asmussen, Andy Laufer. Mikkel Asmussen looks like he's getting up there as well. The Hoff. My God, it's going on. Uh, I haven't heard much from uh, Zara Davies at the moment. We need an update from her. I was a little bit overpowered on that last one. The sand, the rocks are flying now, so it's windy. It's honky tonk. It is. Yeah, proper rock and roll. Windier, isn't it? It's getting windier. What, you're changing down, still the same size? Well, from 5.7 I'm going 5.5 five in a smaller board, so hopefully that's going to do the trick. Not club, someone might have just made it. Oh, Twan, but did he make it? This is all just it's close. He could have made it more, he could have made it less. It's going to be close. He's coming on the trailer. We're going to grab a word with him. Um, I'm after the thousand line. Oh, this is exciting now. You can see the wind is already getting picked up. Um, <laughs> it's so different when it picks up like this. 50! <laughs> yes! Finally! <laughs> What's oh, on the GPS? I had a 50, 53 peak. Woohoo! 53 peak and 50.7 500. 50 on there, baby! Woo! What have you got on the watch? 5186 P oh, yeah. and a 500 of 48.98. Yeah. You really sailed really well. I think it was it was fun. I think you enjoyed it. Too right, man. I mean, right. uh, I had a max speed of almost 53, and it's amazing. I mean, it's really like motorbike racing. It's killing like, it. 
the adrenaline is so high. I'll, I'll go with you on that. My <laughs> adrenaline is just and the, like. And the most difficult thing is to stop. Yeah. <laughs> Hoffman killing it today, peak of 53, he's in the 49 club, he wants to make the 50, stones are being picked up off the beach, we waited all, well, for 10 days for this, finally on our last day before we leave, this competition, don't forget, is still running, we have to leave, uh, and we're going to have to update you on some of the scores, but we are leaving when it is just gone nuclear, as Farrell O'Shea said it in the preview, it's honky tonk on that corner, baby.
battle going on between Chris Benz and Ben Profit. I've heard that's the battle right now. The Benz has got about 80 kilos in his backpack. It's a secret. <laughs> <laughs> He's on. There we go. There is no way that will ever be beaten. No, on, on the 40 wide. On the 40 wide, 39 and a half. 39 and a half and a 5.4. He is the definitely winning the slowest <laughs> always, now right now. Always pumping <laughs> and always two feet in the strap. So competitive. We're here with Alberto, uh, one of the main sponsors of this event and competitor. Uh, you've been coming to this event for quite a while now. You love this place. Yeah, I love this place. I came here for the first time in 2012. And all the years that uh, this event was held, I uh, was here again. I mean, I, I love to come back. We're obviously here to break records, but there's a different side to it. There's personal bests. I mean, you're probably a prime example of this. Every year you have gone up in speed. Yeah. Every year I was up and up. The first year I was petrified every time I had to go down the canal. I'm not up. Actually, I've been a long time windsurfing. I've been windsurfing for, I think, 38 years now. But I don't windsurf enough. So that means the first year going down the canal was really frightening every single time I was doing it. I did, I did my personal best of, over a 49 board. 49 board is big for here. Yes. Then you get used to everything and uh, your mind settles down and then you start thinking about what you could do to go faster and faster. waiting game. Well do you reckon you did about six minutes of winter I think? It probably is, you know, it probably is. So that's it for the Luderitz Speed Challenge 2017. I hope you've enjoyed the coverage. Uh, Windsurfing TV, me and Alfie, uh, we've had an amazing couple of weeks and I think we've put out some really good videos and give you an insight of to what it's really like. Uh, we have been told by the organizers, if you want to get your name down for 2018, you have to be early because those places are very limited. So if you do want to do that, we'll put the emails and the contacts below. Uh, get a hold of Mark or Rafi and get your name down. And this goes for the guys that want to break records or want to break personal bests. I myself got over 50 as you saw which was a huge achievement for me. I was super happy that I'm only 80 kilos so there's definitely a lot of people out there can definitely beat uh, your personal best so get your name down for that. Uh, I want to say a massive thanks to everyone tuning in and all the comments and stuff we've been getting. Uh, we've had a really good response from you guys so uh, I'm glad you all liked it. So the last thing to say is don't forget if you want to subscribe to the channel click down here on the globe you can do that. If you want to watch videos if you've missed any from the Luderitz Speed Challenge you can click over here and if you want to chip some beer money in we'll put the link below but you should be able to click over here if I I can do it all uh, and don't forget a big thumbs up like have a great 2018 we'll see you in the new year it's now time for some waves Woo